First of all, uh, Professor Peter Palensky is our guest in this uh, webinar of Energetica uh, 2030. Uh, Professor Peter, it's, we are very glad that you accept this invitation and this uh, um, uh, cooperation that we are getting with uh, the University of Delft so we can understand more uh, the, the institute that you are leading uh, and that you are involved in. Uh, we can see other opportunities that we can uh, interact in this uh, in this participation and this cooperation. So thank you very much for for your participation. Um, the idea is that uh, you can make uh, the presentation and afterwards we can uh, make a session of uh, questions and comments. Um, that's it. So thank you very much, Professor Peter. Uh, for for everybody, my name is uh, Ernesto Perez. I am the um, uh, one of the leaders of the project Energetica 2030, especially the one involved in the supervision, control, and protection of power system uh, in the future. So, okay, welcome everybody. Uh, uh, Professor Peter, I uh, give you the word. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Ernesto. Thank you, uh, Energetica 2030 community, Andres, and all the others to uh, that you have invited me today. Uh, it's a very nice uh, opportunity to to spread the word across the Atlantic. Um, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Peter Pelensky. I'm a professor for smart grids at uh, the Technical University in Delft in the Netherlands. And uh, today I was uh, asked to explain what the PowerWave Institute is. <laughs> it's the first time that I give such a presentation on, on that topic. So I collected uh, a couple of slides. This will take uh, a bit more than an hour, I guess. But uh, you can ask questions at any time or in the end. Uh, and I hope that this uh, will lead to some nice connections and uh, cooperation in the future. A few words to myself. So I'm here in Delft. Uh, Delft is uh, a city close by The Hague, so between The Hague and uh, Rotterdam, in the south of Holland. And Holland is a part of the Netherlands, but that's too complicated to explain now. And I'm here since a bit more than six years. Before that, I was uh, uh, almost everywhere. <laughs> I like traveling, so I worked on different continents, different uh, universities and companies around the globe. And in the end, I ended up here at TU Delft. And my chair is called Intelligent Electrical Power Grids. So that's just a, a longer name for, for smart grids. And my group is uh, around 45, 50 people. And we, we work on power systems, you know, all levels, all voltage levels, lots of uh, uh, Topics, machine learning, cybersecurity, stability, adequacy, planning, operations, SCADA, that kind of stuff. But today I'm speaking about my other hat. So I have two hats. Uh, one is the professor uh, chair here in Delft, and the other one is the PowerWeb director. And today you will learn uh, what PowerWeb is. So next slide, please. A few slides around about TU Delft itself. Uh, so it's a rather young university for, for European terms. It was founded by the king back then, William II of Orange. That's the uh, royal family here in Delft, uh, in, in the Netherlands. So it's a constitutional monarchy here. Um, in 1905, it was renamed to Institute of Technology and in 1986 to Delft University of Technology. And it moved a couple of times. So the picture that you see here, the Black and white image is the old building that's still in the center of Delft. You know, there is lots of water and bridges and <laughs> and uh, that building is is right there. But the, the, the new campus or the new, 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 it moved a couple of times. Uh, is uh, It's slowly moving towards Rotterdam to the south. Next slide, please. We have eight faculties uh, and it's all about engineering. So we don't have uh, humanities or, or medicine or something like that. This is done in other universities. And five of these faculties, it, the bold ones here, 
a part of the Power Web Institute, and we will learn what that means later. I myself, I'm from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Mathematics, and Computer Science, um, which is a very nice place because it uh, combines everything that I need for smart grids. Uh, it's not only electrical engineering, you also need lots of mathematics and computer science. So I'm happy that we are integrated here and that my colleagues are just next door. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, that can be done quick. So we have a, a teaching program, of course. These are the bachelor courses um, that we offer on campus. Uh, electrical engineering is one of them um, um, that uh, feeds into my direct uh, influence. But uh, on the power web, we, we harvest from everywhere. So you will see that it's a quite a broad uh, institute and, and uh, we, we cover almost all of this. Next slide, please, which will be the, the masters. Uh, much more <laughs> than the bachelors and uh, uh, the two most prominent one that we are working with is the sustainable energy technologies set master and the electrical engineering master so that's where our students usually come from electrical engineering is rather classical and then the set is uh, much broader it has a very transdisciplinary character and uh, is is populated by students with very very different background so next slide, please. There are four so-called initiatives at TU Delft. Um, the Delft Energy Initiative, the Deltas Initiative, the Health Initiative, and Delft Global. PowerWeb is under the umbrella of the Delft Energy Initiative. Yeah? Um, these initiatives are yeah, broad directions from the from the governing board, uh, from the rector, uh, where we are uh, engaging ourselves, and uh, everything we do falls under these these four uh, main uh, trends that we are uh, covering. And in energy, of course, it's uh, decarbonization and energy in industry and the built environment and so forth. And PowerWeb is one of the the legs of this Delft Energy Initiative. It has four legs. But we are also cooperating with the others. So the Deltas initiative is, uh, you know, TO Delta is very strong in water, <laughs> water uh, management, water constructions, uh, because uh, even Delft is below the sea level. And uh, that's why the Dutch have mastered uh, engineering for water uh, infrastructure. Uh, so that's what is in, in the Deltas. Uh, health is, I think, clear. And Delft Global, um, is technology in emerging countries, third world countries, and the uh, the applications are water, uh, health, energy, and so forth. Uh, and we, as PowerWeb, we cooperate a lot with Delft Global because they have lots of um, electrification, off-grid applications, the food, water, energy nexus. So that's what they do, very, very applied. So the students that are, uh, engaged in Delft Global, they really go there. So they fly to Africa and other places in India uh, to implement their projects. It's really uh, an exciting uh, community. And we support them with our technology from PowerWeb. Next slide, please. So you heard that a couple of times. Oh, MOOCs. Um, yeah, that is another activity of uh, of uh, TU Delft, these massive open online courses. Uh, there are a few here on this slide, but there are many more. Uh, and currently we are also developing a, a Power Web MOOC, which will consist of four full courses hosted on edX. And uh, it will teach you the, yeah, the fundamentals of all the physics of heat, gas, water, uh, energy networks, uh, all the mathematics behind it, modeling, socio-technical mechanisms, high performance computing for uh, energy and also the business aspects. So uh, as broad as PowerWeb is, so will be the MOOC. And I hope that we will be online uh, early next year. Next slide, please. So what is PowerWeb? So I used that word already a couple of times. Um, next slide, please. It all started with... Uh, Drivers from outside, yeah, so uh, 
the government, but uh, also companies, especially they, uh, and I think I'll tell you nothing new with that. They see that the energy system is changing a lot. Yeah, the sustainability transformation, the digital transformation, a couple of other non-negotiable um, developments uh, hit the energy system. It's maybe the, one of the last sectors that, <laughs> that is hit by all these new things. And uh, it required a new way of thinking. Yeah? And uh, normally the, 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 the phenomena <clears throat> activities and so forth are sorted in maybe three or four, sometimes it's four uh, categories. And in, in, in the case of, of, of PowerWeb, it was all the physics, all the engines and cables and pipes and, 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 and so forth that you have as, as infrastructure. Then all the you know, controls, logistics, uh, decisions uh, that need to be done, uh, the management, the second group or second layer maybe and on top of that at least one layer which we call here socio-technic system but there is also institutional layers sometimes as a fourth layer um, that uh, represent all the stakeholders and their interests and uh, uh, governing um, regulation uh, in, in the energy system and these things cannot be looked at in an isolated fashion anymore. So this this just doesn't work. You cannot optimize on one layer and, and hope that it also works with the others. Sometimes what you do in one corner of the system uh, completely violates the principles of another corner. And that's why we need a more uh, integrated view on that. Next slide, please. But unfortunately, uh, this requires a lot of expertise. And it's uh, there is not a single education stream, not a single master course that would teach you all of that. Yeah, you, you need uh, uh, controls and you need uh, electrical engineering and you need maths and industrial design. So that's a fact. We cannot change it. We have to accept it. And uh, the result is we need a transdisciplinary approach. We need a transdisciplinary team usually to, to analyze the questions, to find solutions and to, uh, to work on these systems. So we also need a transdisciplinary um, uh, culture and PowerWeb was founded for that. Yeah? So we should take care that people come together, that they, uh, that they find a common language, that they find mutual understanding, that they align their teaching, that they exchange people and ideas. So that was the motivation. Yeah? The, system, the energy system gets very diverse, yeah? different carriers, hydrogen, and I don't know what. Uh, and, and lots of different disciplines have an impact and the industry just poked our noses to it and said uh, we, we need uh, to break down the, the, the barriers between the silos in the, in the education, in, in, in the scientific uh, traditions. And that was the founding moment for PowerWeb. Next slide, please. So initially, it was founded in 2012, before I came to Delft. Um, it was a very loose ecosystem uh, with not much uh, governance. Um, people were meeting for a coffee or a beer uh, to discuss. So there was a bit of seed funding from uh, local grid companies that said, hey, this is a good idea. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll pay a handful of PhD students to, to get it kicked off. And uh, when I came, I took over that uh, that group and uh, changed a lot. So I I worked on on uh, organizational structures, on, on public uh, uh, image, on sales pitches to outside, on, on on processes and so forth. So I'm, I was trying to professionalize it a bit, and it pays off. So it it, it slowly gained momentum. And now it's an institute. That means we even get funding. So we get funding from the university that we use to pay a bit of staff. So it's only three people, one program manager, one secretary, and one uh, uh, valorization officer that help us to, uh, to put our activities on more professional uh, uh, feet. The rest of all the Power Web uh, community is still is the same. So they are professors or researchers or students in the many, many, many uh, departments that we have on the campus. Um, and we are providing yeah, a platform for them. 
Next slide, please. This is a mission statement that we have developed uh, a few years ago. The, you don't have to read it, don't worry. Uh, the two keywords that you should uh, just remember is this platform for multidisciplinary research. So we are integrating things. Yeah? We're bringing things together that were not together before. Yeah? Because we believe there are synergies, there is a value in bringing things together on whatever level, yeah? maybe just in talking, but maybe also out of there in, in the field, in the infrastructure. And the second keyword is this intelligent energy systems. Yeah? So we upgrade the system with data, with insight, with analytics, with measurement, communication technology. So these are the two keywords and I have two slides for that. Next slide, please. First is this intelligence. So that's a classical um, result from this digital transformation. We, we, uh, we see it happening, it's, it's unstoppable. <laughs> and it, it should not be mistaken with digital technology. As, as of course, we get digital substations and IC61850 and uh, IoT and all these things, but the digital transformation is more a societal process. In, in terms of uh, um, yeah, communication or business or uh, other things, uh, the, the digital transformation changed the way how we do things. It, it partially, it enables people, it makes it more democratic. Yeah, with, with digital platforms, you can become a taxi company, you can become a hotel, and it's just a few clicks away. In the past, this was, impossible you know you had to i don't know register business and make your own bookkeeping and i don't know what insurances now with the digital transformation this is all provided for you and um, it's it's the power is brought to the people in in, in the ideal case so people ex expect it now or or, or or want it also for the energy yeah? and if you would translate what we see in other sectors of our lives that are already transformed with a digital transformation and have all these intelligence. It would mean that if I, right now it's quite sunny in Delft, and my, my, my photovoltaic panels produce a lot of energy. If I believe in a digital transformation, I would expect that I can take that energy that is right now generated on my roof, that electricity, and I can send it by email tomorrow to my brother uh, in Austria so that he can use it. Yeah, of course, physically, this doesn't make sense at all. Yeah? But that is the expectation. And mark my words, people expect it and want it and it will happen someday. Yeah? Of course, we as engineers know that there are other governing rules. Yeah? There must be some energy routing and uh, storage and, and balance and other things uh, satisfied. But uh, the, the service is, is what people expect. They want freedom. They want in to be enabled and empowered in this sector so the digital transformation comes and uh, unleashes all that so this is what uh, we mean here with intelligence it connects the dots um, and it's it, it it brings insight it makes things uh, more uh, efficient sometimes we had lots of projects where we had existing infrastructure nothing was changed nothing was replaced or invested just by knowing more about it yeah but Zooming into the details, you can you can uh, improve the operations and efficiency and the reliability and other things. So this is what intelligence gives: data connections, connecting people. Next slide, please. Integration, quite similar. Again, we are connecting things, but this time it's across uh, uh, yeah, sectors, across businesses. And there are different uh, directions, multi-dimensional integration. The classical example is, uh, for instance, heat and gas and uh, and electricity. If you have infrastructure that connects it, yeah, heat pumps and hydrolyzers and I don't know what fuel cells, and you oper or you plan and you operate them uh, holistically uh, together by looking at all the uh, degrees of freedom you have, you can certainly squeeze out some percent of efficiency out. Yeah, you can uh, in increase the reliability, the efficiency, the use experience, everything. So this is across uh, carriers, energy carriers, but the integration also happens uh, vertically between transmission and distribution and customers. 
So all these borders are blurred and we look at uh, how, how can this be done in all the layers, you know, in, in the physical, logistical and uh, socio-technical layers. All of these, these layers uh, require uh, action to, to make this integration happen. So these are the two keywords, it's intelligence or digital transformation and the integration across boundaries. Next slide, please. So this is the mission of PowerWeb. And as I said, the, the staff itself is small. So we are not a department. We are not a, a faculty um, that, uh, that uh, 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 has staff. Uh, we are pooling existing um, uh, existing departments, existing professors, ex existing groups together. What we do have is uh, an, indus an industry advisory board. So we, we try to keep the link with industry very close. We meet them periodically and, and report to them and they give us guidance on, on what to take care of. We have a number of activities, uh, an annual conference, uh, uh, the Power Conference um, with every year a new topic. Uh, smart grid cybersecurity, for instance, we invited lots of hackers and companies. Uh, this year it's high performance computing um, uh, for energy. And we again invited a few keynote speakers and uh, normally it's a big party uh, in, in Delft. Uh, <laughs> somehow there's every, every day there is a party out there for, for, from some group. Uh, there's always pizza and beer and popcorn somewhere. And PowerWeb also does these things and uh, the students like it and uh, we have nice talks there this year it's uh, of course virtual um, so it will be in cyberspace uh, we also have invited lunch talks so every two three weeks we invite somebody from industry or from another university to come to delft uh, give a nice talk we have a big uh, uh, auditorium for it and we we bring lunch for everybody Again, this is now virtual, of course, and there's also projects. I will talk about that later. We try to make ourselves useful in education uh, to, to, to get the overview for the students, to have an influence on the development of the curriculum. And we are the entry point for industry. And I think that is the most important thing. The problems that industry are facing is they, they are very, um, very complex. Uh, very um, diverse. And if you come with your real world problem as a company, you know, as, a, as an energy company or as a manufacturer, to any given professor on campus, that professor can tell you one thing, one spectral line of the problem um, in infinite depth, <laughs> more than you would like to know, but not the rest. Yeah? We are paid for being experts. We are evaluated for this deep dive. And normally this connected thinking is not appreciated. It's not rewarded in the academic system, not in the publications. Yeah. The journal, there are no journals for this connected thinking out there, or almost not. And this is a bit of a disconnect between the, the hardcore scientific tradition and what society needs right now. Yeah, We, we, we need people that think connectedly, that have a, uh, a tradition and a, and a track record of working together with different people, uh, also with economics and, and, and sociologists and psychologists. Yeah. And that is uh, hard to find if you come as a company to the, to the campus. And that's the gap that we are filling. Yeah. We are a group of very diverse people that periodically meet in all kinds of settings yeah, for projects, for, for discussions, for conferences, for fun, but we know each other uh, we know what the others are doing and we we have a, a history of working together. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, there's a couple of laboratories. I, 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 don't, I don't go into details here because I think uh, that is not so inter interesting. It's all, all kinds of equipment, laboratories. We have clean rooms for uh, microelectronics and photovoltaics and high voltage halls and uh, yeah, all kinds of things. Next slide, please. Yeah, that's a new a thing uh, that will be opened. Well, it's, it's already <laughs> open, but uh, due to Corona, it's not. 
uh, but it was built in 2020, last year, the Electric Sustainable Power Laboratory, where we have uh, supercomputers, uh, power electronics, car charging, photovoltaics, high voltage, uh, impulse generators, uh, high power lab, so all kinds of uh, uh, instrumental facilities, technologies, and, and disciplines combined under one roof, and we can make uh, projects together. So we're very happy about this, and this is one of the assets of PowerWeb. So we can, this is this lab is at our disposal, and when we design projects with the industry, we can tell them, okay, we can do this yeah? because the lab is very flexible. Next slide, please. Attached to this uh, to this uh, ESP lab is a is a control room. So we 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 saw that uh, that grid companies uh, they 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 experience a change in how they they plan operate grids, uh, how it's visualized, and uh, we we uh, offer them a, a safe ground to try out things. Yeah, if you have a new machine learning module for your SCADA system, you, you can try it out here. Yeah? This room offers a fully virtualized uh, uh, cyber range, so you can in instantiate your SCADA system. You, you can simulate the grid on RTDS. It's all hooked up. You can have attackers. You can have red team, blue team, uh, hackathons. And you can try out your software here in a, in a safe space without blowing up uh, half of the country because we, we simulate the physics and we can inject faults there without uh, doing damage. And here we can train people, we can uh, uh, visualize things. Next slide, please. Last slide about the general parts and then we come to the projects. So as said, we have five faculties involved. Uh, um, aerospace faculty is involved with all the wind power that they do there. Um, uh, industrial design uh, uh, is involved with the human machine interfaces. Uh, mechanical engineering, because the control guys are there, and also uh, thermodynamics. Um, uh, technology policy and management faculty is involved. Uh, they do all the socio-technical, economical, and institutional aspects, also ethical aspects uh, of, uh, of the energy transformation. And my faculty, the electrical engineering, computer science, and mathematics. Um, yeah. Next slide, please. So that was the, um, the general part. So what you can remember, PowerWeb is, is an institute. It's not a department. It's an institute where multiple departments are pulled together for a joint mission. And this mission is integrated and or intelligent energy system. Not only electricity, energy. And now is a list, a long list of projects. I try to be as quick as possible <laughs> with this. Uh, many of the projects I know very well, then I can tell you a lot about it. Uh, some of these projects I don't know because it's done by colleagues of me. And uh, so I don't know the details. So let's go through that uh, in fast forward. And if you have a question, please note it down and ask me afterwards. Maybe I can give you an answer. If not, then you can contact the, the project leaders and they, they can tell you more. Trade Dress uh, just started. Um, it's a large project where we have uh, only one PhD. <laughs> Um, it's about uh, energy markets. We see that the market rules, the assumptions why and how markets are built for energy are completely outdated uh, based on assumptions that are 100 years old. And they don't hold anymore. If you have distributed generation, if you have uh, volatile generation. And so we have to change a lot of things. If you ask 10 experts on markets, you get 11 opinions on how to do that. So reason enough to start a project. And uh, this is done here. It, collaboration between the electrical engineers and the, and the market guys from the policy management uh, faculty. Next slide, please. So the mission is uh, the future, 100% renewable uh, electricity system, and we might have uh, different markets and also new markets, uh, local markets in a neighborhood, uh, uh, wholesale markets, uh, on national and European level, and uh, we have to make them fit for uh, yeah, probabilistic operations. Um, yeah, a classical example: of what to do with flexibility? You know? Nobody knows. If you have 
one flexibility and another flexibility and you add it together, do you have two flexibility? <laughs> no, because it's a multidimensional uh, probabilistic Pareto slippery thing that uh, does not follow our arithmetic logic. So for that, uh, you need new market rules instruments that people can also trade it and can sell it and can you know, reserve it and make agreements. Currently, this doesn't work well. Next slide, please. Easy res. Um, a project on distribution level. Uh, the idea is that we aggregate um, flexible resources on distribution level, all of them connected with power electronics. And we are pimping these uh, power electronics with a bit of storage. Yeah? So you have an old ordinary inverter, but we, we, we scale up the DC capacity a bit so that these inverters and, and add a little bit of, of code, yeah? a little bit of uh, software upgrade um, so that these resources, uh, for instance, a photovoltaic inverter or a charging station, that they can participate in ancillary services. And there is a list, I don't know, it was an absurd list of ancillary services. And we are testing how this can be done, how re reliable is it, how can it be measured and, 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 and paid for and accounted for. And uh, this is a European project with lots of uh, partners uh, in Greece and in Spain and in Germany and other countries. And uh, yeah, um, next slide, please. We are uh, uh, testing all that. Here in our laboratories, we have a couple of prototypes of such uh, uh, inverters, and they can they can do all kinds of things: uh, virtual inertia, black starting. Uh, they can they can provide fault currents. So all these things that we might miss once we have phased out all the rotating machines from the caloric power stations, they they should be replaced somehow uh, because uh, the design principles of our grid uh, assume that this is available and uh, uh, that's exactly the, the goal of this project. So next slide, please. Hapshish. Um, this is a project in the port of Rotterdam. Rotterdam is the largest port in Europe and it's a monstrous uh, industry park as well. So you have food and beverage and uh, packaging and uh, petrochemical industry, chemical industry, all kinds of things. And um, the port itself is something like the administer, uh, manager, and, and all the companies, they, they own the assets, not the port. But the port uh, wants to be attractive as, a, as an industry site. And the port of Rotterdam has decided in order to compete with all the Shanghai's and Busan's and, and all the other big ports in the world, in order to compete, Rotterdam will be fully renewable. It will be the green harbor on this world, the first one. So all ships, all industry, everything that is done there must be renewable. And they, are, um, yeah, they have different pathways to get there. And we try to make ourselves useful in this, in this big program uh, with this project. Uh, the project is about um, multi-energy systems, so heat, gas, steam, hydrogen, electricity, and uh, the handover points, and how to how to assess uh, these systems, how to analyze them. So there is no analytical description anymore; it's too complex. What we do is we model them in numerical simulation models, and uh, once you have a model that is validated and reliable, you can then let a machine search for changes. Maybe it's more efficient or more reliable if you invest into a heat pump here or there, or in a bigger storage tank here. So these things are not so easy to find out. If you have a, a data center in one building and a swimming pool in the, in the neighbor building, it's of course a no-brainer that you use the waste heat from the data center to heat the water in the swimming pool. That's easy. But in such an industry park, it's not easy. It's very complex. Uh, data is not there. It's, it's uh, confidential. There are dependencies are not so really wanted. So it's a highly complex thing. 
and the complexity of the infrastructure doesn't make it easier. And that's exactly what we would like to solve here. Next slide, please. So what we do is we do multi-physics models with, uh, in a co-simulation fashion. So many of these things are done with Modelica. Uh, so the, 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 heat, the heat pipes and the gas pipes and um, the infrastructure such as uh, hydrolyzers are modeled in Modelica. Then we have uh, the, the infrastructure, electricity grids, uh, also modeled in an in a, in a electricity simulator. And they are hooked up together. And we use uh, that, that, that co-model to develop uh, control regimes, uh, planning uh, methods, and also markets. So there is a number of PhD students working there, and they're also developing uh, markets where you can bid for two communities at the same time. Yeah, so you're bidding for heat and electricity at the same time, for instance, and uh, cheating is not possible. And it's yeah, it's quite a quite a nice uh, uh, project. Next slide, please. I think I have to speed up a bit. Copper cable. It's a big high voltage DC cable uh, between the Netherlands and Denmark, um, subsea cable, commissioned uh, not long ago by Siemens. And uh, we were involved in uh, lots of uh, studies. Um, of course, the cable is, 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 is just a cable, but uh, it's a very modern one with uh, voltage source converters. So this is the the platinum level <laughs> of of making a high voltage DC cable probably. And what we had a look at is uh, the options to later connect something else. Yeah? So now it connects point to point, but uh, we were checking, maybe you can connect in the middle a wind farm or maybe another wind farm and so forth. Yeah? Of course, this changes a lot. Uh, and we were analyzing uh, for, for Tenet the transmission system operator here in, in the Netherlands, uh, what is possible, what is not possible, and how to uh, uh, achieve stability. And uh, next slide, please. And in the end, it turned out that uh, a lot is possible. So we, we found out uh, this multi-terminal thing would be possible with the existing infrastructure. And you have to know that the substation that stands on the shore here in the north of the Netherlands, it's a house, uh, it's a box, <laughs> A metal box uh, costs one billion euro. Yeah. The substation alone, and of course, if you in, in in five years find out, ah, we would like to connect something else, and this means you have to tear down this one billion euro and build another billion. That's not what we want. Yeah. So this is why a lot of uh, time and and brain power is is, is put into into planning and. Uh, scenarios of the future to be sure that this is a, a non-regret investment so that it's flexible and we can use it for many things that may that might come in the future and we found a number of nice applications including frequency support in both directions so uh, uh, applications and services that were not initially planned for but uh, we 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 can show that it's possible and that it will be useful in the future next slide please Migrate, that is maybe the, the largest project we ever had. It was also maybe the largest EU project ever on, on this, in this, in this direction. Um, it's about power electronics or power electronics dominated power systems, you know, large scale. And um, was a huge consortium. Uh, we alone had, I don't know how many PhDs. This is just one part, and the next part comes next. Um, on This is the part on stability. And uh, there were different scenarios. And the most extreme one, of course, is fully renewable, fully power electronics based. So all the traditional power stations are gone. And it's only inverter based. And the question is, is it possible? What is needed that it's possible and so forth? And uh, lots of uh, uh, exciting partners were in there, all the big industry players, all the big uh, grid companies. And it was uh, uh, finished by the end of last year. Uh, next slide, please. So in stability, I, I cannot go into details, of course, but uh, there were different work packages. And there was one, for instance, that looked at how far can we go with the existing infrastructure 
if we operate it better and if we know a bit more. So again, this this low investment into into the intelligence, yeah, into into better planning, better operations with with a bit more uh, knowledge. And of course, yeah, you can delay. You can you can operate longer. Longer means with more and more and more renewables. Uh, but sooner or later, uh, it will come to its limits, and then you have to have another strategy, which is the green, <laughs> the green branch, where the renewables are not the troublemaker alone. The renewables are also the solution. So they should contribute with services. They should contribute with stability. And uh, it's clear that we have to start already now to to make them part of the solution and not only a, a participant that can do whatever they want. Next slide, please. So the results are all online. Uh, you can you can download that. And um, oh yeah, that's again the the power electronic penetration level from from thirty percent where we are now somewhere and uh, to hundred percent in the future. And uh, we develop together with our partners the uh, the algorithms for stability, for planning, for protection, for power quality, and so forth. One pack that will be needed. Next slide, please. This is the other part. So we had two big chunks in this migrate. That's why it's uh, in two blocks here. This is the protection part. First one was about stability. And uh, uh, next slide, please. In, in protection, we see that uh, the existing relays, the existing protection schemes uh, might not work that well anymore. Um, if you have uh, a power system that is totally different, yeah, with bidirectional flows and um, yeah, faster dynamics and uh, lower short circuit currents and so forth. And what we did here is uh, develop new types of uh, yeah, protection uh, 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 schemes. And, and relays, and settings, and so forth. Uh, there's uh, patents and spin-offs as a result of this project, and all of that was validated with uh, with uh, uh, with our real-time simulators here in Delft, where we can uh, uh, yeah, emulate all kinds of uh, nasty situations for uh, the protection. And uh, one of the tests was uh, was run over the weekend. Uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of situations for for different vendors. And in the end, you got a beautiful <laughs> statistics of uh, the, the, the vendors and their products and our, and our scenarios. And some of them were really ugly. And, and, and you could see how well the protection relays behaved and if they did the right thing in the right time. And we found out, no, it's not the case. So we have to catch up. Uh, the, the scenarios that we did, of course, some of them were not yet real. Uh, they will come in the future, but not so far away. And we have to catch up with our protection. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, these are just details um, of the of the of the protection uh, development of these hybrid relays that can do different relays, uh, the relay uh, different protection schemes. Um, next slide, please. TSO 2020, um, a project uh, done close by to the copper cable that I showed before in the north. Of the Netherlands. Copper cable brings wind power from Denmark, sometimes with negative prices. Yeah, so the, the wind power is so cheap <laughs> that uh, you are paid to consume it. And the question was how good can we integrate all that energy there? Yeah, because it's on the, on the, on the shore, the, the, the grid is getting weaker there, not many people living there. And the idea was to um, install large hydrolyzers and produce hydrogen with the excess energy and use that to charge uh, trucks and the national gas pipeline network and um, yeah, other, other applications, chemical industry and so forth with this hydrogen. So next slide, please. Our job was to analyze what does it mean to integrate a megawatt or a tens of megawatts or hundreds of megawatts electrolyzers on that location, on that particular location. So we modeled 
that part of the Netherlands, yeah, the upper right corner, northeast, uh, in RTDS. That was quite a quite a job, <laughs> together with the grid companies, of course. And we we mimicked it. Yeah, we made a digital twin of that part, and we went through all the scenarios of these hydrolyzers. How do they behave? Are they a threat to stability and so forth? Because uh, everybody is a bit concerned if you if you add such a, a new technology in that magnitude. And in the end, it turned out, uh, yes, it's, it deserves a bit of uh, attention, such a project, but it's possible. And if you do it right, you can even use these hydrolyzers for very, very nice grid services. So you can contribute to stability yeah? if you, because they can be operated very fast. They have some degree of freedom and that's a nice thing. So if you're worried about stability, uh, it's always nice to hear, oh, no, it's not a threat. It, it can it can even uh, contribute to ancillary services and other things. Next slide, please. Um, project uh, done uh, again with uh, with the grid companies, uh, tenant for extra high voltage uh, networks and especially cables. We have a trend that transmission lines are put underground. Of course, in terms of uh, Engineering, this is terrible. Uh, cables, cables are cables are terrible <laughs> compared to lines. Yeah, uh, if they break, you don't find the location. It's expensive to repair. If you have a fault somewhere, the dynamics is totally different. Uh, capacitive. So that's a challenge. But uh, people want it. They don't want the the transmission towers in their backyard. So more and more cables are coming. And we had a number of projects in this. So the 380 kilovolt cables that were built uh, were done with us. And this project was uh, about uh, cables in the grid, cables for offshore connections, and how they, how they, uh, what's their impact on reliability. Uh, next slide, please. It was a pretty long project, and it involved uh, the, the development plans of the grid. 10-year development plans, uh, the asset management department, and the operation. And uh, these these groups often have communication problems. <laughs> they have uh, separated databases, and they don't talk to each other much. Uh, this is also a process that goes on in the grid companies now, that these departments are brought together because they, they depend on each other. They can help each other. So in these intersections, you can see uh, examples for for added value if, if they talk to each other. So if if the system operations would tell the asset management how how heavy uh, an asset is used, uh, how is the loading of a of a transformer, then the asset management could calculate uh, when to maintain it, uh, when to replace it, and so forth, because they have models for that, but they don't they don't have the data. So in these intersections, lays lots of uh, um, value, and uh, this this project was. Uh, Contributing to that. Next slide, please. So in the end, uh, there were a couple of uh, deliverables. Uh, one was about uh, offshore wind uh, um, cable uh, re repairment plans where you are better prepared, huh? where you uh, uh, calculate all, all potential things that could happen in the future, and you you prepare the people, you you bring the replacement parts already there, and other things, uh, because the grid companies are evaluated based on their outage time, uh, uh, loss of load uh, supplied, and then other performance indicators are uh, uh, used to evaluate them every year, and uh, they love you if you give them something that reduces these KPIs, yeah, that they are, are getting better. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, that's, so this project had a number of different uh, screws. <laughs> we have identified different positions in the system where we can help. And uh, yeah, this this uh, single line diagram on the left upper corner is, is, is uh, there was a study on how offshore wind farms on the coast because on the coast of the Netherlands to the North Sea there is they are building one farm after another now um, 
they they are a business. So it's it's a money printing machine. You you build this farm, you connect it, and it delivers energy very reliably. So the wind also blows in the night, and in winter, which the sun does not. So these farms are uh, uh, are built. Um, but of course, if if there is a problem, if there's something broken, uh, the business case is ruined. So people are very interested in in alternatives on how to improve the reliability of these things. And there are different options. And one of these options is to connect them offshore. So you have a, a connection between the wind farms. And if, if something breaks in one wind farm, for instance, one of the cables or one of the transformers, you can still go the other route. Yeah? And by that, uh, have at least a minimum level of service up and running while you are repaired. And that was the, the study of that and uh, all the physical and, 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 and probabilistical uh, parts of this uh, of this uh, more and more interconnected system were, were considered. Next slide, please. Era Grade One. Um, that's a nice project where uh, where I was involved, <laughs> um, where we connect different um, laboratories in Europe, in different countries: uh, Finland, Norway, Germany, Denmark even Great Britain, uh, Austria. Uh, and all of these places, either national labs or uh, universities have a laboratory for grids and they have some infrastructure. Uh, one is maybe specialized on heat pumps. The next one is specialized on, 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 on low voltage. The other one on mid voltage, on ICT, on, yeah, you name it. But sometimes you need two or three or four of these things together to make a study, to make an analysis or a project. And that's the motivation for this Eregrid well, project, where we uh, developed, uh, where we developed um, uh, uh, technologies and, 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 and communication protocols uh, to to hook them up uh, dynamically, uh, so you, you can you can you can have a machine in one place and, and and the controls in another place, and over the internet, this is connected together. Next slide, please. If there is an error grade one, there's also an error grade two. <laughs> so now we are in this phase. Uh, it's it's uh, basically the same thing, just better, bigger, larger, faster, uh, uh, real time connections. Uh, Scenario management uh, configuration tools are now developed for uh, research infrastructure connections, geographically distributed. Next slide, please. Uh, GoE just started. Gebaude Umgeving means uh, built environment. Uh, this is a, a project uh, very close to industry, so high TRL levels, where we uh, look at electrification of almost everything, yeah? heating, uh, transport, and so forth, and uh, how flexibility can be assessed and used there. So um, uh, it's a large consortium uh, where, where uh, demo sites, I think it's five demo sites or so, are uh, then equipped with uh, all kinds of infrastructure, boxes and machines and sensors. And we are uh, uh, yeah, modeling them, we are controlling them, we are optimizing them and show the value of, uh, of a flexible uh, built environment, yeah, smart cities, smart buildings and so forth. Next slide, please. LIFE uh, is the sister project to GoE. Um, this is uh, located in, the, uh, in, in Amsterdam. Uh, where there is a big football stadium from Ajax Amsterdam and a shopping district and uh, offices and other things. And they want to make a local um, energy community with local markets, local optimization. So all the stakeholders that are involved there uh, will be represented on a platform where all the physical constraints are implemented, the grid constraints, uh, buildings, uh, uh, heating, time constants and so forth. And with that, you can uh, plan the next future of, uh, of investments, of agreements, but you can also do controls. And uh, there are a number of things that will happen there. They are quite exciting. One is a, 
a trolley bus charging station um, with, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, with absurd amounts of powers that are required. You know, if 10 or 20 buses come at the same time and you have to charge them, these are, these are uh, amounts of powers you cannot imagine. So that and the development of that district is uh, part of this platform. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, the platform itself is a, is, a, is a cloud platform where we, again, implement something like a digital twin as a, as a physical support for the decision making. But uh, it's a lot of uh, stakeholder user interface, workflow, data flow uh, decisions that we have to do there. All the uh, data ownership and uh, data sources and things are really important there when you, when you roll it out. So this is a real project, not... not not a research project where we're just playing. No, this is this is really in use. Next slide, please. Promotion. Um, again, a very uh, uh, protection heavy uh, project. It's uh, it's about meshed high voltage DC offshore transmission. So this is the next step in the North Sea. Yeah, there are a couple of wind farms already, but in the end they will be connected, yeah? and they will connect to the to the Great Britain and to to continental Europe. This has lots of advantages. Yeah, you can use the infrastructure more efficiently. Uh, you you can use it for energy trading. Even if there's no wind, you can trade from A to B. So the the reliability, the business case, everything gets better. But the technology is not easy. This this meshed high voltage DC things it doesn't exist yet, and uh, the the involved parties are uh, worried how to do that. And we had this project to find out what is missing, what do we have to do, are the the, the, the controllers compatible, and uh, uh, can we make it safe and secure? Next slide, please. So there's lots of power electronics involved. Uh, of course, and uh, DC links, you know, you cannot just open a switch <laughs> in DC. There is no zero crossing. So a circuit breaker uh, for DC is also something new. We had a couple of companies uh, uh, in this consortium. Uh, this is a picture from Cybreak, but there was also Hitachi and ABB and so forth. They all have their own prototypes and their own uh, designs of DC circuit breakers. It's a very hot topic. And we were involved in modeling, uh, uh, also with finite elements, and uh, and then validating the uh, the performance of these of these breakers and the protection schemes uh, with our RTDS uh, system here. Next slide, please. Ursus, um, a project with uh, lots of data. So we have phasor measurement units, PMUs, that deliver uh, basically the MRI compared to an X-ray uh, of, the, of the power system. A lot of details, a lot of data streams uh, from the field. And so the question is, what do we do with it? Um, uh, often these things are installed and <laughs> the data just is, is dumped or deleted. Uh, we developed a number of uh, uh, applications and even products uh, that uh, use these data streams for something useful. And one of them was uh, uh, backup WAMP pack and backup uh, protection, corrective control uh, based on these PMUs. So if there is a fault, if there's something wrong, hopefully the local protection does its job. Yeah, so they're very fast. Uh, without much communication, but if the if the system is too complicated, if if the the global picture is is important, and the local protection relays don't have that global picture, they have only local information, and they are very smart and they they try to do the right thing. But if it fails, then we can use this PMU data that we get from the field uh, to make up our minds and find out what to do. Next slide, please. So again, this was done with RTDS heavily. Um, 
uh, where we went through all kinds of exotic situations and 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 uh, uh, disasters, and how to identify it as quick as possible based on this PMU data, and uh, come up with a with a good knowledge base of of scenarios, and then quickly decide what to do. You know, this must be very fast, so you cannot just start simulation and and and, and ponder around for for minutes. So that was the the purpose of this of this project, uh, to to give a an, an ICT based so it's not as fast as classical uh, protection but an ICT based backup protection backup uh, uh, operations for such uh, networks. Next slide, please. Another branch of this Ursus project was uh, about islanding. So we we looked at uh, power systems and how they oscillate. And there is a generator coherency. So if these, these connected generators oscillate with a certain frequency, with a certain phase, you can identify groups that oscillate together. And uh, weirdly enough, it's not necessarily geographically <laughs> together. They are more uh, 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 electrically together. And it turned out that if there is a problem, and if yeah, and it, it, you need to separate the grid, or you have to do some switching actions. Um, normally, this is done uh, based on some uh, protection settings and and, and, the, and the current situation without taking this this generator coherency into account. Uh, but if you know that upfront, uh, if you observe them carefully and you find out this is very very mathematical. So the, the PhD student that did that was <laughs> doing the deep dive there. So if you find that out. And you tell the protection relays upfront how and where to disconnect the grid. Uh, the eye landing is much smoother. Yeah, you can avoid lots of troubles because you don't tear apart generators that belong together, and you don't bring generators together that don't belong together. So all the transient uh, behavior and the and the post eye landing behavior uh, is much uh, much better with uh, that knowledge. Next slide, please. I think we are slowly coming to an end. Resident. Um, again, a protection uh, uh, project. And this time, big data is used. So again, we try to use uh, phase measurement unit uh, data and other sensors, uh, non-conventional current transducers and so forth. So all this digital substation data that we get nowadays. Um, to, to train models, to learn, and to use other nice tricks and nice uh, uh, algorithms that we get from the current AI and machine learning boom for our uh, grid protection. And uh, the goal is yeah, to, to, to do the right thing, to avoid cascades, cascading uh, outages and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. So what is done uh, is, uh, yeah, Lots of uh, uh, scenarios are implemented again on RTDS, um, and we we simulate the power system. Uh, we have all the PMUs implemented there in RTDS, uh, but also real PMUs, so it's a mix, and we uh, develop a, a reliable platform for collecting the data, condensing it, learning from it, and uh, using it for protection. So this is the next generation of protection, basically. Next slide. Um, yeah, as you see, DSOs, TSOs are involved, uh, distribution, transmission. Again, we have to look uh, out of the box. Uh, we, we cannot look at the, the transmission system uh, in an isolated fashion anymore. It, it all belongs together. And uh, also the, the the increased level of power electronics. If there is a fault, uh, the topology of the inverter matters. Uh, how does the fault go through? And that is all done here. A lot of data, and we are trying to, to manage it in the end. Next slide, please. Proteos is the, uh, the child project of the, of, of the resident before. Did not yet start, will start in summer. We are still recruiting. And uh, this is again about uh, protection and power quality, um, um, where we have uh, lightning and switching and other very fast transients. 
and uh, what what's the goal here is to to develop uh, uh, new methods based on electromagnetic field theory and and other uh, uh, novel methods to uh, yeah to develop the next generation of, of protection devices. Next slide, please. Peer-to-peer, um, -peer, Thales, is a peer-to-peer -peer trading project um, where uh, yeah. the assumption is that uh, the, the, the participants in an energy system are are not aggregated, they are not represented by some or delivered or served by some utility company, but it's it's done on the on a mutual peer-to-peer -peer basis. Yeah. So this is one of the examples where the digital transformation or the expectations of a digital transformation are fully thought through. <laughs> so what if 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 we do that? Yeah, what we have seen in other sectors. And uh, um, this has many uh, consequences of course and here in this project it's about uh, the agents uh, um, how do they interact uh, um, how do they make agreements how, how is payment done and so forth next slide please so what is uh, used there is uh, multi-agent setups uh, game theory and uh, yeah local limited knowledge and we try to find out uh, how do the, all the involved uh, stakeholders have to be designed, what, what, what data has to be shared in order to come to a stable, reliable, converging power system in the end. Huh? Because it doesn't help if, if, if the economic decisions are coming up with some solution that is technically not feasible in the infrastructure. So that must be harmonized somehow. Uh, next slide, please. Um, integration of data-driven and model-based engineering in future industrial technology with value chain optimization. Nice abbreviation, digital twin. Um, this is a, a project with uh, 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 also recently started where um, dynamic models, uh, validatable models should uh, be done uh, in, in the in industrial settings. Um, uh, where where the uh, yeah the twin is learning over time, uh, updating topologies, parameters, and so forth uh, for industry. So next slide, please. It's a large consortium of industry companies, uh, ASML, uh, VDL, and so forth, and a couple Tata Steel, Philips, and a couple of uh, universities um, that try to uh, define how these how these twins should be designed, what data goes in, what data goes out, how do we keep the twins happy, how do we use them for our purposes, and in this case it's uh, energy optimization. Next slide, please. ATES, um, these are aquifer thermal energy storages, so thermal storage in the ground. Maybe you can go to the uh, next slide already. Uh, this was done in Amsterdam, where uh, in the soil, so underground, you have uh, 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 aquifer storages where you can store heat or you can also st store cold, depending on what you have and what you need. So this is a seasonal storage uh, where I can store excess heat in the summer or excess cold in the winter to use it in the, in the respective other season. And uh, the question was, how big can they be? How do they influence each other? Yeah, if I store heat and my neighbor stores cold, <laughs> and these exchanges, we have lots of losses. So that was uh, investigated there with field measurements, with simulations, and uh, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the municipality of Amsterdam is uh, interested in, in all uh, technologies and tricks that you can use uh, to decarbonize the city. And uh, heat is uh, one. Uh, we, if if you would tear down the city and build new buildings, they could live without a heating system, uh, passive houses. But this will never happen. You have stock, uh, building stock that cannot be changed, and they have losses. So you have to heat and you have to cool. But if you have to do that, you have to do it renewable. And if you store the renewable heat in the summer and the renewable cold in the winter, you have to uh, have quite large storages, and this is possible with this ATES. 
Next slide, please. Um, control without trust. Yeah, that's also a recently started uh, project um, where uh, decisions and control in a, uh, in a in a distributed control situation is organized with new methods, uh, distributionally robust optimization and, and and dynamic programming and so forth. Uh, in order to uh, make, uh, um, yeah, again, one of the things that the, that the digital transformation promises, that everybody can participate and it's all easy and uh, anonymous and I can I can join and uh, it's it's going to be fine. Uh, we have to first prove it. We have to find solutions for the problems that we know, and we also have to find out the problems that we don't know. And this project goes in this direction, robustifying this distributed control. Next slide, please. So there's a couple of uh, uh, goals that uh, um, are uh, addressed there. So um, uh, there, that's, it's a very uncertain uh, probabilistic uh, situation, but you still have to guarantee certain uh, features. Yeah, uh, you have to guarantee uh, reactions. You have to guarantee uh, performance KPIs, and that is uh, part of this project. How to do that? New mathematical methods have to be developed for this. And in the end, it should uh, end in uh, open source software that uh, the project partners, such as Siemens and ASML, can use for their factories, uh, but also others. I think that was it. Next slide. Yes. So that was uh, two parts. The first part is about uh, the Power Web itself. So it's an institute. It's a, it's a loose network of departments. All of them have something to do with uh, the energy system of the future, which will be renewable, which will be distributed, which will be smart and integrated. And uh, we, we bring people together, together with our industry partners, to work on this future energy system. And the second part of the presentation was a number of projects. It's, it's not all the projects, it was only a selection of this Power Web community that we are doing. And I hope I have explained it more or less uh, in the in the given time, um, uh, uh, I, I I don't know all of these projects so uh, by heart. But uh, if you have any questions uh, that I can answer now, I'm happy to do so. And if I don't know the answer, I would just uh, forward you to the to the project leader, and they can they can certainly help you. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for your for your time. And I, I think we have a few minutes now for, for discussions, as far as I'm informed. Uh, Peter, thank you very much for, for this presentation. It's really impressive uh, what Power Web is. And all these type of projects, and you, you mentioned that it's just a part of them, is, is very impressive. So we will now to, uh, pass to some comments or questions from, from our audience. Um, there is a... Um, a question, uh, Professor Jairo Spinoza is the is the leader of the Energetica program uh, we have met before. Uh, he has some comments uh, or questions. So Jairo, you can open your microphone. Okay, uh, Peter. First of all, many thanks for uh, being here today uh, on behalf of the whole Energetica 2030. Uh, yeah, it is a pleasure to 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 enhance our links with the uh, uh, QDELF. We have been working already for more than 20 years with different departments and we hope to, to have a future collaboration. Uh, when I see, I see many points of, of, of uh, many problems are common problems. And I think uh, that will be a good opportunity to, to collaborate. I would like to, to, to put a question regarding, I mean, all these digitalization, all these uh, use of power electronics and all the use of, of these uh, uh, new uh, sources uh, will take uh, to a new level the, the, the problem of, of, uh, of, um, of frequency control. And, and, and the problem that, that, that we can foresee easily is a, a frequency will be no longer a good uh, indicator since we will have uh, less and less uh, inertia on the system. So how did you foresee uh, that uh, this uh, problem of balancing 
the, the, the consumption and the offer of energy on the network will have will be handled since we will not have this uh, 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 pervasive uh, um, uh, signal, which is uh, the frequency. So frequency mm -hmm. will no longer be a good indicator. What what do you foresee? I mean, we, we will have to intercommunicate all these generators and the consumer and the co consumers. Yeah, good question. Thank you, Jairo. Yeah, <laughs> I believe frequency will still be important. I mean, the the fact that it's that it's ubiquitous and that everywhere and fast is really compelling and great. It would be a shame if we lose that. But you're right. Yeah, if 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 everything is out of balance already, but the inverters just keep the frequency and it means nothing, <laughs> then it doesn't serve its purpose anymore. Yeah, we see a number of trends, and uh, in the end, it will be a mix of all these trends that that will make up the system. I guess one is, uh, of course, virtual inertia that we imitate it somehow with uh, with distributed storage, and uh, we see them installed already. So we have uh, more and more of these container-sized uh, storage packs close by uh, um, renewable generation units, wind and solar. That's one thing. There's a number of developments towards uh, hydrogen storage. Of course, the round trip efficiency is terrible. You, know, you, you always lose 50%. But if it's, if it's too much energy and it costs nothing, uh, nobody cares anymore. So we see hydrogen on big level that was this tso 2020 project that i told you we want to use uh gas caverns uh, salt caverns in the ground to store uh synthetic gases maybe not hydrogen because that's difficult but maybe methane or something else that you make out of this hydrogen and you can store uh, uh terawatt hours there so you can really make a seasonal national storage there to 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 cover um, problems. And we also see it on distribution levels, so on substation level that hydrogen uh, might be used there to, to, to store and to, to balance. We also see lots of DC projects, especially on distribution level, DC house, DC links, and on high voltage, high voltage DC multi-terminal corridors and, and networks. And all of that doesn't make things easy, of course, but you're right, uh, frequency might lose its, its, its Maybe it will be a local, <laughs> now it's a global property. Yeah. Maybe it will be for, for some, uh, not microgrid, but uh, milligrid maybe, uh, uh, a property that has a meaning where, where the generators still agree on the frequency as, as the main symptom of, of balance. But uh, the bigger system will be much more complex. So do, do you foresee that the, the, some sort of clustering has to be put in place? I mean, in order to, to keep this, uh, this, this balance, because we will have then to negotiate between entities. I mean, these milli networks, then, then they will have to negotiate in order to keep uh, the, the reliability. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, if, if, if you ask me, the best thing is a strong grid, yeah? <laughs> centrally managed, properly planned and operated by experts. But reality is different. We have now neighborhoods in the Netherlands that, uh, uh, that uh, I don't know, there is uh, 150 houses there and they only have one, one connection to the distribution system operator. And they, they, they say, oh, we might need it someday, but they have lots of generation on site and storage and so they want to be autonomous of course this is doesn't make much sense in terms of efficiency and resources but people want it and people do it and we will get this patchwork of different solutions of, of energy communities and they want to trade but they all want to also want to be autonomous and they will have dc and ac mixed so even if we say there is a proper way of doing it it will happen differently and we have to make sure that we have technologies principles and 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 uh, a grid and infrastructure that can host it that can connect it and uh, uh, th that's what we see in 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 the projects nowadays and yeah power electronics will be it and as i've, I've shown in the in the micro project there are scenarios of 100 percent power electronics uh, they are possible but you need new way of uh, 
of controlling things. Maybe the roles have to be changed of the independent system operators and the grid owners and so forth. And maybe also markets. You know, if you if you have to purchase services on, on market platforms uh, to keep things balanced and and that you, that you can react on changes. Current markets are maybe not uh, not perfect for that. Okay, Peter, many thanks for your answer and uh, for sharing all the all these uh, insights. Uh, thank you, Ernesto. Thank you. Okay, hi, uh, Peter. I have I have a, a question related. Uh, you mentioned uh, about the digitalization and that uh, it's very important in this digitalization and the intelligence and not only the technological stuff but also um, the social activities that, that are going with this digitalization. I'm wondering if you have some uh, of the projects are related with, uh, with the interaction with the community with this uh, digitalization that is involved in this, uh, all these smart cities and smart uh, technology that you are uh, involved. Absolutely. This uh, demo site in Amsterdam that I've mentioned, where, th where this football stadium is, um, this is also a, a large uh, social housing uh, district. Uh, so people with low income uh, live there. And uh, it's, it's one of the dedicated smart city <laughs> districts in Amsterdam. Yeah? So when, when, you, when you introduce technology there, it's, it's not the, the Tesla driver that has photovoltaic on his roof. Uh, they don't even have their own roof. Uh, they are in a big apartment block and they have energy poverty. Uh, they sometimes cannot pay their energy bill. So the social embedding and uh, the inclusiveness of, of the solutions are of, of utmost importance. Uh, and uh, we, we learned that from the municipalities, you know, the, the city administration, the politicians, the local politicians, they know very well how people are doing. They talk to them, they, they see their, their, their worries. And of course, they have this dilemma of decarbonizing the city. And for that, we need investments and, and, and new technology. And ideally, the people would pay for it, yeah? get an electric vehicle, get a heat pump instead of the gas boiler, et cetera, et cetera. But in some districts, this is just not possible. Yeah? So you have to find a solution that is affordable, that is also understandable. People are afraid of new things. And uh, we as engineers are really bad <laughs> in doing that thing properly. So it's, it's of utmost importance that you are in a team, in a consortium where you have experts, yeah? people that work with the, uh, with, the, with the districts, with the municipalities, with the people, understand them, speak their language, because we engineers, we are too nerdy. Yeah? We come with a solution that makes sense, but it will never be accepted. And uh, then it also doesn't fly. So uh, it's, it's for us, it's exciting to learn that. You know, it's uh, it's uh, something new for us, but we, we have to know what we can do and what we cannot do <laughs> as an engineer. And uh, embedding a technology into a socio-techno-economical uh, system is is a, is a really complex thing, and uh, I think we also at at the beginning there. Uh, the development is very fast, very confusing, and we try to do the right thing, but without the people, uh, it will never happen. That's true. That's true. Uh, Peter, thank you very much for for the presentation. I don't know if there, if there is any other comment or question. Uh, so if there is not, um, Peter, I would like just to, to interact more with you in, in maybe another uh, in another moment. We are really interested in in increase our interaction. Uh, after seeing all these projects, we, as mentioned, Jairo, we, we see uh, a lot of uh, things in common. Uh, we have some PhD students that are working in some of the subjects that you have shown uh, right now. Uh, so we are really interested in in make uh, an opportunity for the internships of these students uh, in in Europe. Um, probably that is one of of the first choices uh, after seeing these um, projects. Very so, good. Uh, the one thing that comes to my mind is immediately the Power Web lectures. You know, we have these lunch lectures where we mm -hmm. invite uh, either people from industry or from from academia 
or from from politics to speak so if you uh, could or somebody else could um, explain maybe energetica 2030 or uh, the energy situation of, of of your country or latin america in general that would be very educative for for us yeah? these presentations okay. are usually around 45 minutes um, we can also make two or three of these presentations if, if we have more topics, but that would be nice. This would be a reach out into, into the local community here in Delft. Excellent. So uh, I think Andreas uh, was uh, just preparing something for that. Uh, we can arrange something for, for this presentation. Uh, so because we normally can... it's, it's physical. Yeah? People are here physically, but yeah, now with corona. <laughs> The only advantage is that we can invite international friends to also <laughs> present. Now. Yes, really easy and fast. Uh, that's that's the idea. Yes, uh, we want to make also some interaction in in person. Uh, so here probably will be next year. Uh, we we hope that things going well at the end of this year. Yeah. I don't know how you are foreseeing that in Europe here we are still delayed with uh, vaccines. It would take, I think, the whole year to, to do that. The same in Europe. It's incredibly bureaucratic and inefficient here in Europe compared to other countries. <laughs> but I'm optimistic. So now the production of these vaccines goes faster and faster and yeah, they will just use it. And uh, I think it will be fine by the end of the year. Okay, excellent. So, Peter, thank you very much. We are really pleased uh, Thanks for the to have you here. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay. So, thank you, everybody, to come here to this presentation and wait for another presentation of Energetica 2030. Thanks, everybody. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.